Howdy, I'm back for another video. Today I want to talk about lighting again because my last lighting tutorial was kind of buns. So I want to teach people how to actually make good lighting rather than like how to make neon grass with uh, polluted air, even though that's pretty realistic nowadays. But anyway, enough yapping, let me get right into this. So I've built this very simple tiny box, there's nothing in it, it's just empty box. I'm going to show you how to properly light it. It's like, what if you want this box to look really pretty? What if you were making a game that's mostly indoors and you wanted good looking lighting? Well, today's your lucky day. Now, when it comes to lighting, there's kind of a lot to talk about. You'll see that there's this little lighting thing in the Explorer. If you click it, you get a ton of properties. If you click the little down arrow, you get a bunch of like little thingies. Now, aside from atmosphere and sky, everything else in here is just a lighting modifier. So like blue. If we go on the bloom and we turn the threshold all the way down to like nothing, you'll see that my hat has begun to glow versus what it was before. There wasn't really much of a glow. It's kind of like an after effect. So you don't need any of these things in here. You could just delete these. But if you add them, you can see they kind of make the game look slightly better. And there's also things like if we go and press a little plus, you can get things like color correction which can alter the way the game looks. You can change the contrast, you can remove the color, just stuff like that. So I'm gonna keep the color correction in there for now. And now I'm actually gonna properly teach you how to light this box. So if you add a part and press a little plus and type in light, you can see there's three different kinds of lights. There's a point light, which is like a circle around the part which emits light. There's a spotlight, which is like kind of a cone in one direction. And then there's a surface light which is like the cone, except it's not a cone, it's like a box. Like it just emits from the surface of the part. A better way to visualize this is to go to lighting and change the technology. So by default, you're on shadow map. If you change it to voxel, you'll see that not much has changed. But if you put it to future, you get like slightly more realistic lighting with even like texture depth. Like you can kind of see cracks in the texture as if they're really there. You'll notice that this light, it's a lot more realistic now. So now that we got the basics kind of done, I'm going to delete this part, even though I'm about to re-add it. I'm going to go to lighting and I'm going to change it back to shadow map. Now, no technology is necessarily better than the other. They're just different use cases. So if I add another part, anchor it, change the uh, material to neon and make it like a light yellow. OK, OK, if we make it like a yellow color, which is absolutely disgusting. But just for tutorial's sake, we make it yellow and we add a point light. And we also make that point light yellow. We increase the brightness, we increase the range, and we turn on shadows. You'll get this very unappealing looking lighting. And I've seen most people will like use like these yellow lights or just not very good lighting, crank it to future, and just leave it like this. And this isn't appealing to look at. So what we're gonna do is when you use shadow map, we're gonna change this light to be still yellow, but lighter. We're gonna drag it so there's more light. Then we're gonna copy this color, paste it onto our point light, and we're just gonna increase that range and turn the brightness down a little. There we go. I'm gonna scale this light so it doesn't just look horrendous. And I'm gonna give it a, a surface light. I'm gonna put the surface light on the bottom Paste over that color as well, turn on shadows, and increase the angle. I'm also going to increase the range. So now the lighting in the room looks a bit more full. In order to make it look even more full, you could move this part here, duplicate this one, and put it at the other side of the room. And now this lighting fills the entire room. Personally, I kind of want it to like not be this color. I want it to be a little more like brownish, orangish. Give it like a warmth. So I'm gonna change the light to that. And now we have this okay lighting, but there's a lot of flaws. As you can see, if we were to like copy these, control X, you can see there's a bunch of like lighting leaking in through the walls. I'm gonna show you how to fix that. So let's control V, oh actually it's just control Z. <laughs> Put our uh, lights back. Now there's really two ways to solve this problem. The first, you could just make it night. So I'm going to go to clock time and I'm going to drag it until it's night. And if we uh, take our lights and delete them again, you'll see most of that light bleed is gone. 
but it doesn't necessarily get rid of all of it. So another way to fix this problem is just, it looks goofy, but if your player is not going to be going outside, you can just put a gigantic, like, oops, you can make a gigantic part over the top of it. And if we go inside of our box and delete both of these, you can see there's no more light bleeding. Control Z, bring them back. So if you weren't going to be going outside, I'd highly recommend just using uh, a gigantic part over the top of everything to get rid of the light bleed. So I'm just going to add a door real quick. And I'll make it dark. Yeah, now we have lighting that doesn't look half bad. Now, as I was saying earlier, the different lighting technologies give you different, like they're for different uses. So shadow map can look really good for 99% of applications. But if you were making like a flashlight and you want it to be realistic, let's just add a, uh, a surface light to this part. Or no, no, a spotlight. Because it's a cone. So in theory, that looks like a flashlight. No matter how bright you make it, it's not all too good. Like you don't get the cone look. So let's turn down that angle. And we still don't get the cone look. We just get a dim light. And it's not awful, but it can be better. If you go to lighting and switch it to future, now you actually have the cone. But man, this lighting doesn't look very good anymore. You have to tweak the lighting to better uh, suit the lighting technology. So I'd lower the brightness of all these lights. And then I duplicate this light, put it underneath the existing one. Disable uh, shadows and can collide so you don't accidentally touch it. The transparency to one and remove our surface light. Then I'm going to go to our point light and I'm going to increase the range. But I'm going to make sure the brightness is a little lower. I'm just going to move this part over this. And I'm going to turn off cast shadows. I mean, they're, they're for preference. It's up to preference. Like, you can have the shadows, but it kind of like shows the fact that there's another light underneath there. But adding more lights inside of an area, instead of just actually using uh, these to cast light, make it feel more full. Like, I still don't exactly like this. So I'm just going to copy all of the existing lights besides that uh, spotlight. I'm still gonna I'm gonna tweak the color along with the brightness, make it feel a little softer. So this isn't terrible, but I'm not like too big of a fan of it. I'm gonna copy this color and I'm gonna paste it into our two lights so they better fit. But I'm gonna make it a little bit brighter so it actually emits the glow. And then let's use some of those uh, post processing uh, features inside of lighting to make this look better. So with uh, color correction, we can turn up the brightness and turn up the uh, contrast, lower the saturation, or raise it, depending on what we want. And you'll see that the lighting becomes more appealing. Like, we get all of the coolness of future lighting, like cracks and texture depth. Because, like, look, you can see bumps that you can that you weren't able to see before because now there's a light being shined on them. I don't know. This is just really, really nice. I really like future lighting. It just has a lot of caveats. But if we turn it back to shadow map, actually, this doesn't look bad at all. With shadow map, this looks even better. So it looks decent with future if you uh, want future for its few benefits like if you're making a horror game i'd probably use future if you wanted to do like a cone flashlight but if you're not using future and your game is not meant to look incredibly realistic shadow map can really get the job done like this just feels like old roblox to me like this looks really nice oh it's really down to uh, preference now there's a lot of other post processing like features like there's a lot of things you can add like blurs so we can make I don't know a blur color correction of course and there's things like depth of field which when enabled it you can make things far away look blurred so if I just up I don't know if I just up and change the settings you'll see it slowly like now my little dude over there is blurred but when I go near him it's no longer blue but it's blurry over there see before after Depth the field is just like a simple thing you can do to blur uh, things far away there's like a lot of other post-processing features, but I'm really going to let you experiment with them. Not every game needs all of them. But like, as you can see with uh, Bloom, uh, switching the settings up, it went from looking like this to looking like this. But if we put this in to Future, 
you can see that before this is fine. But now, in future lighting, boy, I glitched that, I glitched the thing. All right, in future lighting, now shining lights on people who are wearing white clothes, they've just become mini suns. So it's important that you pick and you build your game around your uh, lighting technology because this is okay. This is not okay. We would have to tweak the bloom now. We cannot have that intense bloom. We'd have to lower that intensity or uh, raise the thresholds until the white no longer is as crazy. But as you can see, it still looks insane. So we'd have to probably just lower the uh, brightness of our flashlight. But yeah, this is just a very simple video on how to properly light things. Changing the skybox can also like affect the lighting type. So if you go to the, uh, here, we go to our skybox and we get like, I don't know, let's see. I don't know, this sunset one. The lighting inside this box is slightly more orange. I'm not sure if you could notice, but it's a little more like the sky color. And if we actually use the atmosphere, you can see you can add like a slight fog to the box. But if you're building a game that's mostly inside and you're not going to be going outside a lot, and especially if it's a horror game, I'd recommend just using a solid black skybox. Because if we go, we don't actually need this uh, density. But if we do decide to use the density to like sort of make things a little more like hazy, foggy, it doesn't affect or add any light bleeding anywhere. It just looks fine. Like this isn't half bad. And on the other technology, future, I mean shadow map, it still looks decent. So yeah, this wasn't a very in-depth tutorial, but I'll be making a lot more covering lighting. Okay, this is off center and it's bothering me. I'm making a few more covering lighting in like different ways you can use it. I just don't want to uh, make this video too long. So if you enjoyed, I'm glad. Have a good day.